Hey everyone, Grand Fleet here. Chapter spoilers are out and we're here to see it because this chapter is insane, to put it lightly. Full of dull fruit lore and a crap ton of Rob Lucci. Either way, let's get into the chapter. Play the new intro. The chapter title is Everything Exists for a Reason. But first, let's talk about the cover story, because it's a cover story. Let's cover it. In the cover story, we see a ship in a flashback. It is Mad Research Center, and it is financed by the Lone Shark King, also known as Dufel. We have actually seen this man before at Big Mom's Tea Party in Whole Cake Island. His name is Dufel, and he is the Lone Shark King of the Underworld. But now on to the chapter. It starts off with Luchi trying to attack Luffy. Luffy uses Gear 5th, and Luchi uses his new awakened form. In this form, Luchi's fur is now black with flames and clouds surrounding him, kind of like Gear 4th and Gear 5th, more Gear 5th-esque. But from there, we cut to Sentamaro, and he appears with S-Snake and S-Hawk, and as Shark, uh, the Jinbei, Hancock, and Mihawks here from Counterparts. Oh, and by the way, if you don't remember who Sentamaru is, he is the Marine that stopped Luffy's crew back in Sabaudi pre time skip. It goes on to be stated that the Seraphim cannot be given orders over Dend and Mushi. That's why Sentamaru has to be on Naked Island to control them. But what's interesting in this chapter is we do end up getting the level of authority for the Seraphim. Right at the top, we have the Gorosei following Vega Punk right at the bottom and Sentamaru, and then right at the bottom is anyone can actually control them as long as they have the chip that controls the Seraphim. It is definitely weird that Vega Punk is not first to command for the Seraphim, definitely because he did create them in his own laboratory with his own two hands, uh, but the Gorosei is number one in command, uh, which is weird, but also technically not because it was created for the Gorosei. They did ask Vega Punk to make the Seraphim, so, um, yeah, it's very interesting, very, very, very good stuff we know in this chapter now. We then see Sentamaru order Esper to attack CP0. Jimmy and Chopper run while carrying Bonnie, but then suddenly they cross paths with Seraphim as Shark, which is Jimbei's counterpart in Seraphim form. Jimbei is a bit shocked and stunned, but keeps moving for the sake of Bonnie and Chopper. Meanwhile, Kaku and Stussy are dodging Esper's attacks because of the government telling them not to damage any of the Seraphim. Then we cut to Nami's group watching all of this happen on the monitors, and they finally see Gear 5th. The Hoku is astonished by this amazing white form of Luffy's. Meanwhile, the real Vegapunk appears behind him with his new teleportation device we saw last chapter. Then Frankie's eyes turn into hearts after realizing this is the real Vegapunk. I love that, by the way. Vegapunk then asks everyone what Luffy's new form is. Nami says she doesn't really know, but it's probably a new Gomu Gomu no Mi power. Vegapunk then states that the Gomu Gomu no Mi was never recorded and put into the Akuma Encyclopedia, meaning Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will pause the chapter for a second just so I can say, hey, you watch the channel. You can subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Now back to the chapter. Vegapunk states that Nika may have been erased from history, but as long as people keep wishing for him, Nika's existence will never disappear. Vegapunk expands on the idea of people wishing things into existence, similar to how people wish for Nika to come back and he comes back, similar to devil fruits. Devil fruits are combinations of people's wishes around the world. So an example would be like if someone wished to be as fast as a cheetah, that wish would be put into the world and manifest as a devil fruit, becoming the Chita Chita Zone fruit, let's say. And before anyone does comment this, the Chita Chita Zone fruit is not held by Rob Lucci, he is a leopard. But Vigapa continues to say that because these wishes are so unnatural, it's hated by the sea, which is the mother of all nature. The most natural thing on the planet is going to hate the most unnatural thing on the planet. That actually explains why the sea is the devil fruit's weakness. While Nami and the others process what Vigapunk just told them, basically saying that Luffy is a sun god and how devil fruits were created, we cut back to Luchi versus Luffy. Them both in their awakened forms, Gear 5th and Luchi's new awakened leopard form, they clash fists. Luffy starts to smile and laugh as he dodges Luchi's attacks with ease, similar to in Wano where he started just dodging Kaido's attacks and laughing uncontrollably. While Rob Luchi is completely frustrated that he can't even hit Luffy as we see in his face, he keeps trying to throw punches and Luffy keeps dodging and dodging and dodging because he's such on a high level now, Luffy uses a do attack 
Gomu Gomu no Mogura. This attack turns the floor into a fist and punches Luffy in the stomach, making him cough up blood as well as being blown away. Luffy stops when he sees Sentamaru. Luffy sees Sentamaru and starts acting friendly towards him. Meanwhile, Sentamaru says that he owes a great debt to Vegapunk because Vegapunk liberated him from his life of poverty, so he decided to fight against CP0. Sentamaru, deeply caring about Vegapunk, asks Luffy if he could take Vegapunk away with him. Then we cut to Luchi when he gets back up, but he's quite injured, but thanks to his awakening, it's made him a bit more resilient. And this is very common with Zone Awakenings. Guess we have not seen many Zone Awakenings in the series, but let's think about it here. Think about it with Logia. A Logia Awakening can turn other things into fire. Think of the Marimera Nomi. If you touch a box, let's say, you can turn that into fire and not only your own body. With a Paramecia, let's say with Luffy's fruit, well, probably not a good comparison because he's not actually the Gomu Gomu no Mi, uh, but sure, let's go with Luffy's fruit. Luffy touches the ground, he can turn it into rubber in his awakening. But with a zone, you can basically make your body better because the zone's all about the body, about a, an animal or a form. So you become more resilient, you become tougher, uh, of course you become bigger, stronger, this is the whole part of the zone fruit. But now back to the chapter, we see Luchi recover while Sentamaru and Luffy are talking. Luchi uses Soru and then uses Shugan and attacks Sentamaru and then we see Sentamaru very injured. Now this wasn't stated in the chapter but I'm pretty sure it needs to be addressed because it's probably what's going to happen. Luchi probably gauged Luffy's power and seeing that it's too strong for him and that he can't beat him like he did back then even though he didn't really beat him back then uh, but he can't compete so he's just gonna have to use his head which he does even earlier in the chapter Kaku did say uh, that you can't fight Luffy he is a Yonko now we need permission from the higher-ups and you're not that strong to fight him anymore of course Luchi retracted that statement and fought him anyway but after fighting him he was like oh crap this guy's a bit too strong so he's using his head and now Luchi is saying that all he has to do is eliminate the commander which judging by the level of authority we got earlier in the chapter Luchi would be correct here because uh, before in the earlier in the chapter we saw that it goes Gorsei, Vegapunk, Sentamaru which is the commander and if we take out the commander and Vegapunk's not around and the Gorsei are not around it will go straight to Rob Luchi which does have a chip to control the Seraphim. Luffy seeing this is now angry screaming out Axe Guy and the chapter ends there. Uh yeah that chapter was absolutely insane with the you know the straw hats finding out and seeing Gear 5th and the Nika reveal of, you know, Luffy being Nika. Of course, we already knew that, but they didn't know that. And uh, the way Devil Fruits are created, we've been wanting to know this for, what, years now? More than years? What, 25 years? That's insane. I've People have lived longer than that. I haven't lived longer than that. And then we have, like, Jesus, man. Like, And that bait and switch at the start, where, of course, most people already knew that Luchi was not going to win to Luffy... Uh, who knows, actually, maybe next chapter he might go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. But what I got from this chapter was he's probably going to use his head, which he did stay. All we got to do is take out the commander. We don't got to take out Luffy to get the Seraphim, uh, because I doubt the Seraphim are going to listen to Luffy unless they do this. And I have a, you know, I'll tell you guys in a minute. But yeah, you know what, guys, this was a really good chapter. Uh, unfortunately, chapters won't be coming out as frequent anymore because it's the end of the year. This always happens with One Piece. I'll actually make a video about that and look out for that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, let me just reveal the little gag I w want to happen. Um, yeah, yeah, let's just move on to that. All right, guys, so here's the gag thing I came up with. So here we have, so we know the Seraphim are just after the Warlords. For example, S Snake is just Boa Hancock, best girl in One Piece that's not on the Straw Hat crew. On the Straw Hat crew, we all know it's Robin. I'm not a big, very big fan of Nami, if you couldn't tell. Either way, now, we know the Seraphim all have Devil Fruits. We don't, actually, we don't know if the S-Hawk, like Mihawk one, has a Devil Fruit. But we do know that people that don't have Devil Fruits as Warlords and were turned into Seraphim are given different types of Devil Fruits. Think of the S-Shark Devil Fruit. Jinbei doesn't have a Devil Fruit in his actual, you know, Jinbei doesn't have one. As Shark does, and he was given the Swim Swim Fruit. Now, I could make a video saying, oh, maybe the Mihawk uh, Seraphim is going to get this Devil Fruit, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, what if the Boa, the Seraphim, uh, as Snake, gets the same Devil Fruit as Boa Hancock, 
But that'd be kind of weird because she's a kid. And I don't think Oda wants to go down the route of making kids, you know, a attraction to marines, which are old men. It's eh, Don't do that, Oda, please. He could do it in this way, right? He could do it in a way of... Instead of being cute in the sort of way like, oh, she's cute, oh, I, well, I'm going to ask her out. Being cute like, oh, you're adorable. Kind of the Puss in Boots route of she's just adorable and throws people into stone. I want that to happen. And what if she falls in love with Luffy at that young age? Now, that's a, still weird, but not as weird as, you know, falling in love with a child. Also, FYI, I would love to see a Doflamingo Seraphim. It'd be so... Imagine Doflamingo Seraphim, Crocodile Seraphim just partying together. That shit would be amazing. Either way, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys later. Grand Fleet signing out. Later, everyone.